G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for yet another tips video, although today I do have the luxury of having a little bit more time in between games. The festival of footy is over, the 20 straight days of footy is over. And uh, I gotta say, while it was nice having footy on every night, it is also good to have the extra couple of days to put these videos together because the time pressure was real. In fact, I completely missed one of the rounds back there as you might have noticed. This feels like one of the first times I've done a tip video for the last few weeks where we've actually been at the perfect end of a round. So I do wanna acknowledge the footy tipping overall leader and the round winner. The winner of round 12 was Jasper, who tipped eight with a margin of 33. He was best on. And the total overall winner is once again, Julian, who has 77 correct tips overall and actually leads by two tips. I have finally cracked the top 50 and my dad has slid to 13th. So it was nice to see his smile fade a little bit this week when we caught up for dinner. In terms of fantasy, it looks like we have a brand new leader of the competition. Draper the Breadmaker, AKA Patrick Barbieri, if I'm saying that correctly, now leads the league with 1675 average at the moment. That is a great effort just in front of Hazard 11 and the Thug 5. Anyway, guys, before we get into the tips, I do just want to acknowledge we have done a Cold World Podcast 3. I want to say thank you to everyone who got around Podcast 2. I think it struck a chord with a number of people talking about how we want to be remembered, got real deep and meaningful. And in number three, it's pretty deep again as well. We talk about the lessons from our 20s. So I would be very, very grateful if you guys check that out. I'm going to put the link of that as the pinned comment to this video if you get time that we see. But anyway, let's get into round 13. So we can see the ladder is really starting to take shape with the top contenders really compressing at the top of the ladder. Of course, bearing in mind, uh, these little plus signs here indicate that this team has played one less game or two less games. I think it's just one at this stage. Uh, so the ladder's not a perfect indication, but you've still got the power, Brisbane, Geelong, and West Coast in that top four. The Eagles holding a game in hand, of course, with a tough run in Queensland yet to come. St. Kilda, Richmond, Collingwood, and Melbourne in the top eight. Melbourne have made a great recovery to their start of the year. Of course, they've still got a game in hand as well. GWS, after their terrible loss, slipped to ninth. The Bulldogs are in tenth. Essendon, Carlton, and Gold Coast sort of make up that sort of in-between level of teams right now. And then Fremantle, Sydney, and Hawthorne, believe it or not, are really settling into third last on the ladder, which is something I really didn't pick this year. And the bottom two are still North Melbourne and distantly Adelaide. So let's look at the first game of the round, and it's Gold Coast playing back-to-back -back games, I guess. They're, as I record this, they've just played Richmond at uh, at Metricon, oh no, sorry, at the Gabba, and uh, went down. It was a pretty valiant effort. Obviously, the Tigers are playing in a hub scenario, looking pretty fatigued. You know, I heard a hard week talk about them not having been able to train properly, um, as would be the case with most hub teams, if not all of them. Um, so a little bit of duress the Tigers were playing under. Nonetheless, Gold Coast have been pretty consistent this year. They haven't had too many shit games. Coming up against a fairly even side. In fact, this is 12th versus 13th. Carlton. I thought played pretty well against Fremantle. Fremantle obviously in some good form at the moment. And they overcame them. I think they were trailing the whole game to literally hit the lead after the siren. Now, I do think Fremantle was robbed. But nonetheless, Carlton did create enough opportunities and put themselves in that situation. And we're deserving winners, I guess it has to be said. This is a really tough one. I think I'm inclined to back the home team. They're pretty evenly rated sides, these two. I'm actually not sure who to tip here. Oh, I'm very tempted to get Gold Coast. I actually think I'm going to go the Blues here to carry in their momentum after such a dramatic win last week. They have to be buoyed by that to some extent, even though they're on the road. I'm going to say they win a thriller by six points. Bulldogs hosting Melbourne. These two sides, almost like a little mini final here. Uh, eighth versus 10th. I'd have to say if the Bulldogs lose this, they're pretty much out of touch with that top eight, which I think is really starting to solidify, particularly if Melbourne is the team they're losing to. Maybe I'm wrong there, but... The Bulldogs obviously put Adelaide to the sword, um, and while you know Adelaide's not a tough opponent, at least they did it compellingly and convincingly, and they're quite clinical in the way they won by, what was it, 10 or 11 goals. Norton's back, he's playing well, six goals uh, really adds an edge to their forward line, so maybe there is a different dynamic from the Bulldogs going into the latter half of this season, but again, they're coming up against Melbourne, who have won their last three games by 50 plus, I think. And they absolutely put Collingwood to the sword. I do think these two teams are fairly evenly rated. I would have said the Bulldogs were the better team at the start of the year. 
But on current form, I do wonder if Melbourne have the belief to really keep pushing. And if they do win it, they're in a very, very good spot to play finals. Oh, this is a tough one. I think Backy Char is going to hate me if I don't tip Melbourne. I think I'm going to have to say the Doggies. i just got a funny feeling they're going to win. That, that one's based more on gut feel than actual sort of intuition. But um, I'm going to say the Bulldogs win this by 10 points. Next up, Port Adelaide versus Hawthorne. Port obviously coming off a horror performance against the Cats. A real sort of out-of-the-box performance in terms of, you know, what we're expecting to see Port Adelaide uh, produce this year. And, of course, every team is uh, is going to have a down day at some point throughout the year. Every premiership contender has a shocking game at, at some point throughout the year. So I'm going to say Port Adelaide, I won't read too much into it, and they are back at home against Hawthorne, who travelled to Perth. Uh, well, tr- hubbed in Perth, of course, and uh, got done fairly easily by the Eagles. I wouldn't say Hawthorne played poorly, um, but the week before that against Fremantle, they really are sort of settling as that bottom four side. Now, Sicily's just done his ACL. Um, that is a devastating blow. I don't like Sicily as a bloke, but you never feel good about players doing an ACL and having their next 12 months ruined. So that sucks for them. He was definitely in AA contention. I'm going to say the power put them to the sword here by 26 points, but it would be a very Hawthorne thing to just come out and win this for no reason. Next up, we've got our dream time game between Essendon and Richmond. Essendon are a side that has just absolutely been cruel by injuries this year. Their injury list is quite extensive. Last week, they had a good opportunity to make a statement against a team like St. Kilda, who had just come off a belting at the hands of Geelong. I felt like that was a good opportunity for them to really make a statement, but St. Kilda flogged them. In fact, the score probably flattered Essendon, as far as I'm concerned. With the way that game started, it could have got a lot uglier. I'm not judging Essendon too harshly for that because they don't have that many players available at the moment. But they're also coming up against Richmond, who have had, you know, an equally challenging, maybe not equally in terms of injuries, but they've had their own adversity as well, but seem to be tickling, ticking along well. And like I said in my video the other day, uh, yesterday, go check it out. Five teams can win the AFL flag. I do think Richmond are still the number one seed. I'm going to say Richmond are comfortably a better side here. I think they're going to win by 28 points. Next up, Fremantle versus Sydney at Optus Stadium. Not a clear choice because both these sides are, well, 14th and 15th on the ladder, so pretty close. Fremantle enjoying a bit of an upturn in form, having just beaten Collingwood and then Hawthorne in back-to-back weeks. And we're very unlucky not to get the four points against Carlton as well. We're seeing a lot of improvement for their young guys, in particular their midfield. And while they're one of the most injury-ravaged teams in the comp, which doesn't get talked about a lot, they have a lot of their best 22 missing um, they are still sort of seeing some positive signs, and I think Fremantle, will, there will definitely be a lot of positives coming out of this season. Um, coming up against Sydney, who, for whatever reason, belted GWS at Optus Stadium last week. A great start to their short stay here in Perth. Hard to really know what to make of that. On the one hand, GWS was playing horrible football. On the other, it still takes a decent side to put away a side clinically in the way Sydney did uh, even when they're playing poorly. So, of course, we're still seeing that good Sydney team bubbling away under the surface, but they're not replicating that often enough. The mental side of this game is what intrigues me. Our free men are going to be flat after their loss last week. There's a good chance, or they could come out firing. I could really see it going both ways, and Sydney equally will be coming into this with some momentum, and we'll see this as a winnable game. I can see myself changing my tip later because I can see Sydney winning, but I'm probably going to just tip Fremantle for now. I just think at home they are the better side, but Sydney do have their performance in them where they could just win this game by four goals. Adelaide versus Geelong, not really too much needs to be said about this. Probably, well, the, easily the worst form team of the competition in Adelaide, 0-12, coming up against what I would describe as probably the form team of the competition. You can say that West Coast are playing some hot footy as well, but Geelong's doing it in a hub, which impresses me even more, and they've just belted a premiership contender by something like 10 goals last week, and um, I'm really, really rating where Geelong is at the moment, and if they can sustain this, and I think they're well-equipped to sustain this, they're going to make it very deep this year. I don't need to bang on too much about this one. Geelong will win this by six goals. Next up, again, a sort of top-of-the-table clash. you got third versus sixth. Brisbane now hosting St. Kilda at the Gabba. Obviously, St. Kilda We'll talk about them first, really sort of bounced back well after that bad loss to Geelong, and it was a bad loss, frankly, but they haven't really had too many performances like that this year, evidently. They sit sixth, um, and then this is another chance for them to make a statement against a contender, not necessarily to win the game, because Brisbane are really one of the top-seeded teams 
going into finals as far as I'm concerned. But St Kilda really need to take this opportunity to show they can match it with a team like Brisbane at the pointy end of the season. Brisbane, on the other hand, are coming off a kind of indifferent performance against North, where I really don't think they brought their best intensity to that game. It did seem like they maybe felt like they had the win wrapped up, and I can understand why that isn't the most motivating sort of mindset going into a game. But nonetheless, they do what did they do what good teams do, and that's win when they're not playing well as well. And that, again, is a feather in their cap because that will often be the difference between teams being a top four to six team to being a top two team. And I believe Brisbane are a top two team. I'm going to back in the home side here to win by 20 points but only if they bring the intensity that's got them to where they are at the moment. If they play like they did last week, they'll lose, and I, there's a good chance of that, but I'm going to conservatively say Brisbane. Next up, we've got the Eagles and the Giants. The Eagles playing some really good footy at the moment, but the injuries are sort of starting to mount up a little bit at the wrong time of the year going into a hub where we're playing something like five games in 19 days, uh, which is untimely, but you know we've, we've really worked into a rhythm where... Um, you know, smashing Collingwood, beating Geelong in our best performance of the year, I would say. Good performances against Carlton and Hawthorne. Um, and one last really good opportunity to bank four points before a really, really tough run home. Looks like Yo's going to be out for the rest of the home and away season, which hurts. Liam Duggan uh, may or may not come back. And Jack Redden is out as well. Uh, I'm not too sure if he's coming back. So just a little bit of injury pressure starting to mount at West Coast. They're coming up against the side who with truly have their backs to the wall at the moment. Probably one of the most underperforming sides this year other than Hawthorne for a side that made the grand final last year to get pumped by your crosstown rivals at a neutral ground at Optus Stadium is a really bad showing. But I do remember last year Hawthorne did annihilate them in Canberra inexplicably not long before finals and then we saw what Geelong, what GWS turned into after that. So you can't write off a side without talent. Are they leaving their run a bit late for the grand final? Probably um, I didn't include them in my five teams who can win the flag. But nonetheless, there's still a chance for the finals. And as such, I'm expecting a better performance from them. But I want to say the Eagles overcome a spirited giant side and win this by a few goals. I think this could be the last game of the round or the second last. I'm not sure. Collingwood versus North Melbourne at the Gabba. Collingwood obviously coming off some horrible form. Um, you know, getting pumped by the D's is really not a great showing. I know they've got injuries, and as far as I'm concerned, they probably have some of the best excuses out of any club right now with the off-field turmoil and injuries and hubbing and travel and stuff like that. I do empathize with that. At the, going into this game, though, not the most compelling form lines. That being said, coming up against North, who sits second last and uh, nearly got the job done against Brisbane last week and is certainly capable of upsetting any team on their day. I do wonder if Collingwood will finally click into gear and just think, if we don't win a game soon, we are going to lose this season. It is getting to that point for Collingwood. Probably can't afford to drop too many games for the rest of the year if they want to be a premiership shout. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's not going to be a great game. Collingwood do have their injuries. They did get a lot in last week. They just need a, flick, a flicker of confidence to really lift them out of where they are. I'm going to say they win this by three goals. Sweet. All right, that is the end of the round. As we look at the ladder again, you've still got Port and Brisbane in the top two. And again, Geelong and West Coast round out that top four with the Eagles having a game in hand going into the hub. Richmond, St. Kilda, Collingwood, and now the Bulldogs make up the top eight. And I have Melbourne sliding down to ninth on the back of just tipping the Bulldogs to win that in a little bit of an upset, but obviously I'm really not too sure about that one. Carlton move up to 10th, still with a sniff of finals, although I don't really know how realistic that is at this stage. Car uh, GWS level with them basically on the ladder in front of Essendon, Fremantle, and the Gold Coast. And the bottom four remains Sydney, Hawthorne, North Melbourne, and Adelaide. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in to yet another weekly tip video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit like. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And again, I would really appreciate you checking out Cold World. The link to the latest podcast is in the pinned comment of this video. And of course, guys, don't forget, manscaped.com is running a promotion for this month only, just for two weeks left in August. If you use the code word TRUEFOOTY, all caps, all one word, as the discount code, you'll get 20% off and free shipping. And you'd be really helping out the channel if you were going to buy that stuff anyway. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.